An interesting case of a 52-year-old female who initially presented with a type B dissection and was found to have a cold left leg that was treated with a left iliac stink graft in which she did very well. However, at the time of the um, initial dissection, she was found to have a large pelvic arterial venous communication. This was completely incidental. Uh, here you can see it on the CAT scan. What we're doing here with the CAT scan is uh, performing intraoperative fusion of the CAT scan uh, with a biplanar image which has been taken in order to guide the intervention. Uh, Hard to tell whether this is a fistula or an anterior venous malformation. As you'll see, there really looks like there's only one communication. Um, she'd had two previous pelvic operations, but none were complicated. Uh, so making that distinction is a little bit esoteric at this point in time. You treat them the same way. So here you can see right iliac uh, access up and over the bifurcation. The check mark is the fused image, which shows where the bifurcation is. And the green circle is the origin of the internal iliac artery and the tortuous course. You can see that once the catheter is in it, there's some defor deformation of it. Uh, the middle panel shows you the previously placed uh, viabon, uh, nicely healed, and this complex pelvic arterial venous malformation. What we're trying to do off this uh, reconstructed image is choose which branch is actually feeding this uh, fistula or a malformation if there's more than one branch. So um, the second branch we catheterize, you can see the seed appears to feed directly into this, uh, giving a little more credibility that this may actually be a fistula. Uh, the vessels are enlarged, very tortuous. You can see that there's almost a stenosis at the distal end where it joins the iliac vein. So we placed the five French sheath up and over and placed it in the origin of the um, internal iliac artery. Uh, we then got a burn catheter, which we've selected the branch. And through this, we're actually advancing a uh, direction microcatheter. And through that direction microcatheter, we did a hand injection using a 5cc syringe and 20% contrast. Um, we couldn't advance the microcatheter all the way. And so through it, we placed an, a V14 wire and it uh, easily uh, followed the tortuosity of the vessel, allowing us to follow this with the direction microcatheter, um, giving us as much uh, selectivity as we could actually uh, obtain. Uh, we then did, as you'll see, another angiogram, um, which really confirmed that we were um, in uh, the feeding vessel. You can see there's an aneurysm followed by a uh, communication with the vein and you can see the overlying viabon from the uh, previous dissection. So we chose uh, interlock 18 embolization coils. Uh, first one we used was a 10. It went distally. It's a little oversized. We measured this vessel about four millimeters, but you can see it passed into the aneurysm and then started coiling up in the aneurysm. Uh, so we then pulled the microcatheter back um, as we deployed this and so it funnels down into the feeding vessel. Um, it needed a surprising number of coils actually to occlude this. So we started off, as you can see, I believe this was a 10 by 30. Um, it's now deployed. Uh, you have to watch to make sure that the coil has separated from the end of the uh, delivery system. Um, we then basically put in a uh, eight millimeter uh, coil and you can see it's coiling nicely here. This is a, a more appropriate size. We then packed internally uh, using a five millimeter coil. And uh, what we're looking at here is the cone beam CT reconstruction, which gives us a really nice uh, depiction of what this aneurysm uh, uh, looks like. And, and again, I think it was another five millimeter coil that we uh, place into this. So the position is still five French sheath in the um, origin of the internal iliac artery here. We're injecting through the microcatheter and you can still see that there's flow through it. Of course, we are fully anticoagulated at that point in time. So we opted that, uh, for this reason to go ahead and uh, place some more coils. Um, and this was, uh, I believe it was another five millimeter coil that we, we placed in here. <clears throat> I opted then to go ahead and uh, re uh, reverse the anticoagulation after that last coil was placed. Again, because we're so far distal, this is a pretty safe situation to actually uh, uh, place these coils. So here you can see it's now starting to occlude, but still filling. At this point, we did go ahead and reverse the anticoagulation. And once it was reversed, 
you can see actually now it's really starting to occlude. This patient did have some pain in the left thigh and left uh, um, high groin area. Not sure if it was related. Here's the original uh, view, and you can see that um, now it's completely occluded. So this is a likely pelvic arterial venous fistula treated with um, uh, selective catheterization and coil embolization. Thank you.